What's up, everybody? It's me, Ronald Young Jr. Thank you, thank you so much for listening to Leaving the Theater. I really appreciate your support. And I'm here to tell you about another way that you can support the show, and that's through Patreon. Patreon is a service that allows listeners like you to directly support our work by contributing every month. Your contributions really, really help. They help pay for studio costs. They help pay for our engineer. It help pays for gas and movie tickets. And the more contributions we receive, the more we can do for you, our loyal listeners. And we are trying to take leaving the theater to the next level. We really want to do big things. We want to go on a national tour. We want to look at old movie theaters. We want to do a live show. We want to do a holiday themed live show. We want to do a lot. And we can only get bigger if you continue to support us. And your support comes with benefits. There's so many benefits. You get leaving the theater swag. And depending on what level you contribute, you could even suggest movies for us to review. You also get access to the Nope extended episode. That's on there right now. If you sign up today, you'll get that today. We discuss spoilers. Uh, and even last week's episode, Bodies, 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 is available on Patreon right now with spoilers. It's on there. All you got to do is sign up. We even have lost episodes of Leaving the Theater coming to Patreon, including Black Widow, which was an episode I did with my guest co-host, who was my Tinder date. So check out the chemistry on that one when you get a chance. So please, 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 when you get a chance, go to patreon.com slash leaving the theater. It's just like it's spelled right here on the podcast device you're listening to right now. Again, that's patreon.com slash leaving the theater, or you could just click the link in the show notes. Thank you so much for your support, and thanks for listening. Now, let's start the show. Brad Pitt is back in a bucket hat. In Bullet Train, the veteran actor is a fish out of water playing a seasoned assassin codenamed Ladybug. Through seemingly coincidental events, Ladybug is pitted against a train full of killers as he attempts to recover a mysterious briefcase. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm leaving the theater. Check, 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 check. All right. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing Bullet Trade, and I'm here with... Alana. Nevins. Okay. <laughs> Bullet oh, Train. Directed by David Leash, written by Zach Okowitz. I think I said that right. Starring Brad Pitt, Joey King, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry. Andrew Koji, Hiroyuki, Hiroyuki Sanada, Michael Shannon, Benito A. Martinez Ocasio, a.k.a. Bad Bunny, Sandra Bullock, Zazie Beats, Chatting Tatum, and Ryan Reynolds. All right, so uh, this is a movie, if you've seen the previews, there's a lot of uh, Brad Pitt running around with glasses and a hat on, a bucket hat to be exact. Uh, Folks are being very loud over there. Uh, bucket out. Oh, we'll stand around a corner over here. Uh, as long as there's not an echo. Uh, anyway. A lot of Brad Pitt running around on a train. Yeah, we've dealt with that before. Uh, a lot of Brad Pitt running around um, and fighting folks on a train. In this one, he is after a MacGuffin, a briefcase, uh, while evading other assassins. Uh, this is very much, uh, you know, a fun action, super gory. Like, very gory movie, gory. very violent, very <laughs> violent movie. A lot of, what did you think? I thought it was way too much blood. 
and too many snakes. There was one snake. There was only one snake. I know, it was too many. (laughs) But there was just um, so much blood. But it was fun. Like, the whole premise of it, the being on a train and seeing new characters on the train was fun for me. Nice. Oh, should I still... Is that it? Okay, all right. So, uh, (laughs) there were a lot of characters on the train. Um, Did you think that the... Because when I saw the previews, I thought it was going to be... I thought it was going to be way stupider than it was. It was less stupid. It was definitely less stupid than I thought it would be. Like, it was fun. It was too long. Way too long. It was, like, had ten different endings. And the, the actual ending... Well, it's not very good. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, no. But, We're not going to say what the ending was. But it just wasn't very good. Exactly. It wasn't, I, like, watching along, I thought there was a couple things. One, I didn't know it was going to be as mysterious as it was. Mm-hmm. I thought there was way too many flashbacks. Mm-hmm. I thought, like, they flashbacked to everybody. But it did, I, it, it felt like it was getting pretty tongue-in-cheek because at one point they flashed back a bottle of water. And- oh, I loved that part. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that part so much. Yeah. So they're like, they're giving backstory on each one of the characters and everyone as they're facing each other. It's kind of a very, in, in a lot of ways, the way like manga is or Japanese, uh, you know, Japanese animation where they, they do a flash of their face and then they go backwards in time to say how this character ended up there. And there was a lot of that here. And this is based on manga, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? um, yeah, I'm, I, if I'm not mistaken, I forgot the name of the book specifically, but it's something, something Ladybug which has to do with uh, Brad Pitt's code name in this movie. Um, what did you think of Brad Pitt specifically? He was fine. He was... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of Nevins. <laughs> he was fine. Uh, would you land or expel? Okay, okay, okay. He, um, at first I really loved his, like, that he had gone through, done a lot of work on himself. So there's a stick that he does where he keeps repeating therapy over and over again in therapy lines, and he's done a lot of work on himself is what you're talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Which, it was um, funny. It was kind of a little bit too much at times. But like he, he was like the same character that I think he kind of is all the time. You think so? Well, I feel like he, well, he's playing a parody of the characters he is all the time. Right. He's certainly having more fun. I know what you mean. Like he's certainly having more fun. I think I don't think he was necessarily like Rusty from Ocean. Oh well, you know, if, if, if these are the roles that bit. these are the roles that he's in now, it feels yeah. like it feels like he's playing more like it's like he's like, oh man, Chris Evans and the Avengers guys, they get to have all this fun. Why can't we? Why can't we also have fun? You well, know what I mean? I feel like he also doesn't he doesn't really have much emotional depth. And I understand that that's not really the focus of this, but I I did have like we didn't go to his backstory, did we? You know what now that you said that I realize we didn't. We didn't. Yeah. Like it was everyone it was everyone else but not him. So he gets to be, you know, like the the white man who's coming in and kind of like saving everyone and everything. Mm. And what what about him? He still gets a bit of mystery behind him. And I think there were some parts about this movie that felt very, uh, you know, traditional in that yeah. sense. Uh, but it still felt, like, fresh. Like, it felt like something I hadn't seen before. Like, I wasn't necessarily predicting what was going to happen next. I had no idea what was going to happen next. I mean, in some cases, I felt like, obviously, this gun is going to go off. Obviously, this person is going to get their comeuppance. But I had no idea how the pieces were going to play out. Uh, and... It felt like even though he was a white dude in in command, uh, he didn't necessarily have control of the situation. He was kind of just going along for the ride on the train. True. What did you think of Joey King? I had a lot of thoughts. Oh, I didn't. I I didn't. I thought I don't like mustache twirling villains, and she was doing a lot of that. She was doing a lot of "Hmm, and if you do that, this will happen here. And I was like, I don't. I don't really. I don't really like that. What did you think? I agreed with what you I agree with what you said, but I also think that her uh, the position they put her in was like stupid, obnoxious, antiquated because it was like, oh, a, a woman could never be the real villain. And it's all these guys running around and trying to chase other guys. And she's like, oh, because I'm a woman, I'm getting away with all this. And it was just kind of um, basic. I think they played into the fact that it was, she was supposed to be like a little girl, which is like 
I mean, I didn't like that either. Didn't like that. Yeah, it, just, it felt like you're right, a little bit antiquated. I think mostly performances wise, everybody did fine. Yeah. I think I probably enjoyed the most Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry. Were those the two guys? Yeah, Tangerine and Lemon. I think this whole movie honestly could have been called Tangerine and Lemon, and you could have gotten rid of uh, like like Brad Pitt could have been a supporting character in this movie, and it could have been about these two brothers, yeah. and I think it would have been a better movie, oh, honestly. Okay. Because I'm sitting there thinking about it, I'm like, there's there's no reason why it had to be this guy. Or it could have just been like, it, it could have not been an assassin. Of, like, for the idea of him to be an assassin on a train who has bad luck, mm-hmm. they could have just had a guy on the train who has bad luck, who finds himself in this situation, who's bumbling along and stumbling and keeps running into the briefcase. But for him to be like a, a, a capable like like criminal, a, a capable fighter, I don't think that necessarily added to any of the story for me. Mm-hmm. But the best parts I liked was when we were looking at Brian yeah. Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson going back and forth, even though Byron, Byron Tyree, Brian Tyree Henry's uh, accent was pretty bad. Which one was that? The black guy. Is the other guy actually British? Yes. Oh, okay, because I was like, his accent seemed pretty good. Yeah, his was there were and there were a few when Brad Pitt did his accent. That was very funny. That was very funny. Like it, he made, had, it reminded me of Snatch. What he was in Snatch. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was in Snatch. Brad Pitt. <laughs> you don't listen to the podcast. Everyone, <laughs> a lot of doesn't listen to the podcast. We didn't even cover Snatch, <laughs> but I just want to keep talking about a lot of doesn't listen to the podcast. No, I do. I'm as. You have said correctly. I'm not a current listener, but mm-hmm. I have listened. All right. Well, okay, well, I wanted to talk about another well, thing. Go ahead. I loved the train yes. because it kept us, like, it made it, there's so much happening, mm-hmm. but it kept pulling us back to, like, okay, we are going back. We are sitting in these, like, I liked that we just kept coming back to it. I thought it would be really boring, but mm-hmm. it actually wasn't. Yeah. But also I just kept getting, sorry, I get got a little stressed because I was, like, they're destroying this train. How does no one else notice? Obviously, yeah. it's a movie, so it's unrealistic. But it's like they destroyed the entire kitchen. And then that woman came in with her, like, trolley thing. Mm. And she was just like, oh, do you want some water? And, like, the entire kitchen was destroyed. Well, I think that was a bit. That was supposed to be, like, a bit I like like was. we're taking a break, break between the fight. And there was a lot of, like, very like old school comedy bits in this mm. where it's just like when they're taking a break from fighting or like the ways in which like there's like a break in the action or even the train stopping itself like all the train stops also represented in breaks in the movie that's you know true. what I mean with the movie when the train is moving that's the only time there was really any action that's but when the true. train was stopped there was no action and I think I might have stumbled onto something they did on purpose yeah that's true and that's when you got maybe other characters yeah. or or like the real villains were the ones that were waiting for them outside. Exactly, yeah. With that, Sorry. what would you give this out of five stars? Two. You give this two stars? Yeah. All right, that is heckalo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would give it, I would give this, I mean, I'm going to just average yours. I'm going to go average up on yours and say it's a, no, well, I wanted. I think this is a three star movie. Oh, okay. I think this is like one hundred percent a three star movie. Okay, fine. Oh, two point <laughs> five. Two point five. All right, I'll give it three point two five, and we'll average it at three. <laughs> three star movies. You guys heard it first. The first time I convinced someone to raise their uh, raise their rating on a movie, but you liked this movie. I did. I enjoyed it, but then I was thinking about what I. Which is maybe not the right rating, but mm. I, I was like, did I enjoy it? Yes. Would I see it again? No. That's three stars. If you oh. listen to the podcast, you would know that because Nick established that during Jurassic Park. Okay. Well, but I don't think it's a three for me. It's not you all the way. You never watch it again, though. Right. Okay. But you enjoyed it. Enough. It was too long. There was too much blood and there were yeah. too many snakes. So what is a three-star movie to you? Something else Brad Pitt is in? Yeah. No, no, no. You can pick anything. What's a three-star movie? Can I have options? You can... Uh, uh, what's the oh? What's the last movie you saw? Everything, everywhere, all at once. But that's like a five. A four, okay. A four plus. Okay. So the rating system is what's escaping <laughs> you. So we're gonna give this one a three. We're gonna give this one a three star. A lot of we're gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you your own line in the uh, in the show notes. So you give it two stars. I give it three. You said two and a half. All right, Alana gives it 2.5 stars. I give it three. I think uh, this movie, I think for most people, I think this movie was uh, 
I don't think it was better than The Gray Man, honestly. And I think this movie could have done well on Netflix. I think it could do way, way better on Netflix than it's going to do in theaters. Because I don't think, like, I, I, a part of me being upset was the fact that I was in the theater watching it. And I was sitting there, I was like, man, I don't want to be in the seat. I want to be on my couch. I want to be able to go to the bathroom. I want to get some water. I want to be, like, in peace in my home. And instead, I'm, like, at a theater. I had to drive here. So I think, for me, that kind of, like, knocks it down and I think I mean honestly I think this movie could have been 3.25 maybe for me but sitting in a theater I was like huh it's a three and it was a little long you're right so yeah so I don't think your 2.5 is off I think your two is like whoa but (laughs) your 2.5 is like well because I was just thinking about a part when half of someone's brain got blown out and I didn't like that you don't like gore and violence though okay I I couldn't didn't you see me putting my yeah I saw that a lot yeah had I known it would be that much I would have picked a different movie for you yeah but it wasn't I could handle it could you (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, Alana gives it a 2.5. I think that's fair. I give it a three. Uh, three. So uh, we'll put both of those lines in the show notes. We're not going to average this one because I think it brings it down too low. But I think we definitely had two different views of it. So I think that that's okay. With that, Alana, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Listen to the show. Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Thomas Tyra of Bias Studios mixes the show. Thank you, Tom. Show art from Katie Helm. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. For more information about Bullet Train or Alana Nevins, check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oh, It's Big Ron Studio shows by following us on Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at Oh, It's Big Ron Stew, S-T-E-W. Leaving the Theater will be back soon. Thanks for listening. Check, check. All right. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing Bullet Train. Bullet Train. Okay, you got to stop talking. Oh, really? You don't listen to the show. Wow. I did. Yeah. I have a guest here who does not listen to the show. <laughs> no, I did. I listened to Because she interrupted. With Nick. All right. I'm adding color. No, you don't add color yet. Oh. I thought I would get bored with us being, you're yawning. Yeah. I'm wondering what a yawn in your face. Go ahead. Thank you. I just I just wanted to state that so everyone else knew. Thank you. <laughs>